On to football on the Sportsmax Zone now. The CONCACAF Nations League kicked off on Thursday with action from all the three leagues, leagues A, B and C. Let's see a rundown of the results now. Trinidad and Tobago 1-0 over Curaçao. Panama 3-0 over Martinique. Guatemala 2-0 over El Salvador. Those are the League A fixtures. St. Kitts and Nevis coming off their Gold Cup campaign. Beaten 2-1 by Guadeloupe. St. Lucia 5-1 over Dutch St. Martin. In League C, we had Anguilla beaten 6-0 by French St. Martin. And the U.S. Virgin Islands in a 2-2 draw with the Cayman Islands. A big result for the Soka Warriors who started life after the sudden retirement of uh, captain Kevin Molino with a 1-0 win over Curaçao who were the last champions of the Caribbean Cup and Nathaniel Mark James goal in the 87th minute sealing the victory for the Trin Begonians so we have um, Ligier Williams to discuss the matches with us here uh, TNT getting a, a good result as we just mentioned there um, clearly Angus Eve based on the stories we ran earlier on this week under some pressure but would have gotten some satisfaction with that result over Curacao. Yeah, I think winning always cures bad feelings when it comes down to these things. Um, so it's not to say that maybe he has won back over the dressing room if he even did lose it, yes. to be said. But I, I think a good win, a 1-0 win, you, know, you mentioned Curacao is the last Caribbean Cup winner, so they aren't a weak team by any stretch of the imagination. So mm -hmm. I think Trinidad will be looking to build upon this and then try and push forward. Yeah, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, having campaigned in the Gold Cup this summer, would have been disappointed with their loss as well. Yeah, I, I don't think that was an ideal start for them, but St. Kitts are a, a team they're riding high. I think that they have quality in their squad as well. They're a very defiant team in terms of how they dig in to get results. So I think that they'll bounce back and eventually try and see if they can push through and get more positive results in the nation's league. Yeah, and uh, we did have a chat with the president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, Atiba Harris, uh, during or a little just after their Gold Cup campaign, and he does have big plans for the team. I think one of the youngest football association presidents in world football at the moment. We say good afternoon to Atiba Harris and all the best with your campaign as boss of St. Kitts and Nevis football. Now, the reggae boys will be looking to uh, start their campaign with a win against Honduras at the National Stadium in Kingston, a team which they are unbeaten against since 2013, a record of four wins and a draw. And, uh, Lij, we had some negative pre-match narratives coming out of this fixture or ahead of this fixture because apparently the National Stadium field is not in the best of conditions and head coach Hamer Halgrimson doesn't appear to be very happy. Yeah, I was at the press conference and I saw a bit of their training yesterday. The field isn't in a, a good place, one might say. That's not something, unfortunately, that's particularly new to us. We have seen national stadiums, um, national stadium in, in the past being in not the best condition going into games, but I think this is up there in terms of the, maybe the quality of the field. Hal Grimson even said in the press conference that he doesn't feel the national stadium gives us any type of advantage yes. in terms of the football that he wants to play. So he, he's clearly not happy with it, but you know, the show must go on. He has two very important games to play. And there's a team that mm -hmm. I think can get a lot of confidence against because we have been doing well against them. He did mention that all of that is out of the window now. It is a fresh game against a fresh team, but I think that we should have a lot of confidence coming out of the Gold Cup. And against this Honduras team, I think that we can do a lot, a lot against them. And I think that we can maybe try and see if we can push on, get some more confidence and to play against a Haiti team who I thought did really well in the Gold Cup. They surprised me a lot mm -hmm. in terms of the football that they were playing. They got a positive result mm -hmm. in their game that's going on or probably recently finished. So that's going to be a tough game. I think we need to really get out there and make a statement win tonight. Yeah. Um, Ricardo, I'm not sure if you have a, a thought on this because the Chris Brown concert was held just less than two weeks ago at the National Stadium. And uh, there is the general feeling that the tens of thousands, I'm not sure how many people were there. I know Mariah Ramarak was there. I'm not sure if you were there, Ricardo. Or I, you, I definitely or you it wasn't there. Yeah, but uh, it was a huge crowd. Yes. And I don't think the condition of the field uh, benefited from the trampling. Yeah, by the way, that Haiti-Cuba game ended nil all yes. um, a short while ago. But I, I wanted um, to get from Leger, if he had gleaned from um, the JFF or from the head coach, whether they considered moving the game from the national stadium. 
Um, well, Sabina Park has, has okay. become a good alternative for yeah. Yeah. football in recent times. And remember on the weekend of the Chris Brown concert, mm -hmm. the national under-17 girls team um, played their qualifying tournament and that match took place at, at Sabina, Sabina Park. Park. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I am surprised if they didn't that they wouldn't have considered yes. Sabina as option, Park as, as an, an option. option. If it is that the stadium field is as bad as maybe Hal Grimson feels it is. Because yeah. the point Lij was making just now is that what he is saying is that all of the players that he will have in his starting roster tomorrow and on his bench are accustomed to playing on a far superior field than they will get this evening. So they have no home advantage. They, they are not in a, The Honduras players will enter this game based on the conditions in exactly the same position as the Jamaicans because the Jamaicans are not accustomed to playing. They are all overseas based pretty much. Playing on a, on a field that is in the condition that the national stadium is at the moment. Yeah, and the truth is we've known from the get-go that coach Hal Grimson is big on quality surfaces, yes. as he should be, because to play quality football, you need quality surfaces to do so. And we've lamented um, the lack of quality surfaces across Jamaica. Um, having, having said that, Lance, you are very much right. Where is the advantage going to be for this reggae boy side? There is absolutely none coming into the game tonight if the surface isn't great. Remember when Hal Grimson first took over this team, one of the things he said, the fields in Jamaica were so poor yes. that if Lionel Messi came here to play, he would look ordinary. Yes, he did. And, and, and I've not forgotten that statement yeah, because yeah. I think it's telling. Yes. Is, is the training that we just looked at, the training footage, is that yeah. the Stadium East field? Yeah, that's the Stadium East field. Is it that the field was in such dodgy condition that they didn't want to further compromise its condition? Yeah, I believe so, so because, because I heard the coach complaining that... They trained there the day before. They trained on the National Stadium, stadium the field day before. the day before. So I think they didn't want to further damage it. Because from what I'm seeing, as I mentioned, in the past we've seen where the, the stadium field has been uneven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I remember a couple years ago, a journalist went there and even there was a hole big enough for him to sit down in a couple of days before a game. So I don't think that was the issue in terms of the field now. I think it's more so the dryness of it. That's what Hal Grimson was referring to because he wants to play quick football, the ball to be moving around and for that you need more slicker surfaces. Yes. So I think that's mainly the issue and that's something that can't be fixed overnight. So mm -hmm. maybe they just wanted to make a little extra prep. But as to both of your points, it, it doesn't give us an advantage. And I, I think that's something that n not only the JFF, but maybe the government needs to look out for in terms of going forward. Yes, the National Stadium is our biggest arena. That's what we're going to use for major events, such as the concert. But we also have to think about what we're doing for our sports, because at the end of the day, it is a sporting arena. And we always want to put on the best possible show mm -hmm. and have the best, give our teams the best possible chance mm -hmm. to succeed. And it's not going to be like that tonight. Yeah, I also want to make the point that it's not just that the reggae boys will not have an advantage tonight. I put it to both of you that the reggae boys will be at a disadvantage tonight mm -hmm. um, if the surface is not up to par, if it is as bad as coach Hal Grimson at, has suggested. Why disadvantage? Disadvantage because as he pointed out, the players in his setup are not accustomed to yeah, but a the surface Honduras players like are making, this, have the same feet they to play might, on. They, they might be more accustomed to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the point you're making. I, I wasn't sure that's where you were going. <laughs> yeah, but, are, but what about the Jamaican roster, though? Do you like it? And, and based on the quality of the players, can we look beyond the surface now and, and talk about what the Jamaicans are likely to do? And if, in fact, they are favourites to win this match? I mean, I think we are favourites, judging off, as I mentioned, the, the, the confidence that we should have coming out of the Gold Cup, yes. how good we have been against Honduras recently as well. And the quality of the squad is really good. Um, only a couple of changes in terms of the Gold Cup squad to this one. Hal Grimson has, Coach Hal Grimson has mentioned that he wanted a level of consistency in the squads because even in the press conference he mentioned that, yes, people may think that he's still playing a, 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 a reserve type of football, but he's just saying that the defense is the easiest thing to fix. Anytime a, a quality coach goes into a setup, any setup across the world, you try and fix the defense first because the attack, the, there's a certain synergy, synergy that you need in between attacking players for the attack to start blossoming. And that's going to take some time. And in a national setup where you're only together for 
a couple of weeks at a time. It's going to take some time. So he's more been relying on the individual quality of the Jamaican players. And we do have a lot of individual quality. We won't be, won't be with Antonio. We won't have Antonio for this um, go around. But I think we have a lot of quality across the squad. He's brought in quality players to replace what we wouldn't have. Um, Cephas is back in the squad. I'm excited to see him. So I think generally we should be favourites. We are favourites. And I'd actually be really surprised if we don't win this game comfortably. Mm. Yeah, and um, how excited are you about Cephas? Because we spoke briefly about him last week when the squad was named. We know of his extreme pace. Um, he doesn't have a lot of international experience, but he has played in Europe now, North Macedonia and now Turkey. So over the past season and a half, he's gotten the feel of um, fairly high quality football in Europe. What are, what are you expecting from him and how, and how much playing time do you think he may get? I think he um, should come off of the bench in this game. Uh, he's a quality player and I think what he always brought is excitement and goals because he's blisteringly fast but I think he has a calmness in front of goal and that's the calmness that led him to score so many goals in Mac Macedonia and then go on and earn that move to Turkey. So I think he's a really exciting player. I think that he can bring a lot to the setup in terms of what we need, especially on the flanks. We have a lot of good wing players but there's always going to be room for more and I think that Cephas alongside the other good young players that we have in those areas can bring a lot of bright sparks to our attack and maybe see if we can score more goals. Yeah, Damar, I agree. He came in a few days early to work one-on-one -on -one with the coaching staff. Have you been able to um, pick up how that period has gone um, for him? Well, I can only go off of what I saw in the training session and he looked sharp. Actually, all of our attackers looked sharp. Um, Leon Bailey looked really good as well. Dujan Richards, he looked really good. Um, scored a couple of really good goals in the training session as well, what I saw that they were going through. So it gave me a lot of encouragement in terms of what we're going to see on an attacking front going forward in this um, team. So, yeah, I think Gray, Bailey, Bobby Reed, so many players there to excite. And I think the Jamaicans will have a really good time tonight. Okay, we have three matches on the ch on the channel tonight on Sportsmax. There, I will give you just a couple of results so far today. As uh, Ricardo mentioned, Haiti and Cuba nil all. St. Vincent and the Grenadines defeated Belize 2-1. That's in League B. And there was a nil all draw between Bermuda and French Guiana. Coming up on Sportsmax this evening, uh, Barbados against Montserrat. 7 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time on Sportsmax. Jamaica versus Honduras also on Sportsmax. 9-10 Eastern Caribbean time, 8-10 local time. And Grenada taking on Suriname. That match will be live on Sportsmax 2 at 7 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, 6 o'clock in Jamaica. We go to break. Back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.